Welcome to the Broken Pie Chart Podcast, episode number 37. I'm your host, Derek Moore, and today we're going to talk a little bit about time decay in options. You know, one of the things that we've talked about recently on the show and I've talked about before is the benefit as being a seller of options, uh, as a seller, you get the benefit of time decay of premiums. And if you're selling option, you're hoping eventually it gets down either to zero or just some predetermined level. And so what is time decay? What is theta? Theta is the Greek that we use to sort of quantify what time decay is and how does it work for trades? So first things first, when when you're a seller of options, and I, I hear this a lot, I hear people saying it'd be better to be a seller of options versus a buyer of options because you'd rather sell something that's a depreciating asset. And that's not untrue. There's a lot more that goes into it than just being a seller. But I often describe selling options as imagine, uh, you know, because over time the value will, will drop and there's this term called all else being equal. In economics, uh, they call it, it's a Latin term that I can never pronounce, but all else equal really means when some everything else doesn't change and you're just focusing in on this one component, what exactly happens to that? And so a lot of people like the idea of selling options uh, because they are akin to, imagine if you were holding an ice cube and eventually that ice cube will melt and you'll have no ice left. And it's kind of similar. Options have a premium because options are based upon a couple things. They're priced based on the expectation of how big a move will be over a certain amount of time. So options have an expiration date. Uh, There's also where the underlying asset is relative to the strike price. To a lesser extent, interest rates, although interest rates uh, would have to go up or down quite a bit to affect, uh, especially on a short-term option, the options price, what the dividend is or no dividend on the underlying stock. And so there's, there's a number of things that come into play. But to give you an example, let's look at a hypothetical, let's use a, an index option and selling the 2700 buying a 2675 of an index. That's a 25 point wide spread. Uh, that would, let's say the premium, you could sell that for around, I don't know, buck 40, buck 45, buck 50. And so what happens when you have an option position and you've sold premium? Every day that passes, in theory, you are seeing some time value coming out of the value of the position. So that one I just created, it's about you know, 9 10% away from the current index level. And if you were to put that on today, uh, the calculations say over the course of a day, it would decline about $4.24. So when I said I'm you know, selling it for about a buck fifty. To put on one contract, the spread would bring in about $150. So one day's time decay, roughly, you know, a little bit over $4. And remember I said all else being equal, because although time decay is one of the factors in how options are priced and how options are moved, that assumes that there's been no change in the underlying, meaning it opens tomorrow at the exact same price, that the volatility remains constant meaning the volatility is exactly where it is today. Remember, the more volatile or the more implied volatility an underlying asset, an index or a stock has, the greater potential moves the options are pricing in. That's why right around earnings, you'll see options get a little bit more robust in their premium, even if they're very short-term options. Uh, But of course, all else equal, that's theoretically what you would see come out uh, in a dollar value in the position. And so that's called theta. Theta is one of the Greeks. Theta represents time decay. Delta is the uh, the amount, uh, the percentage change for every one point move in the underlying. The gamma is sort of the delta of the delta, meaning after you move a point, what's the new delta? Uh, vega that represents how much a position would make or lose depending upon a one percent change up or down in volatility, and then interest rates are how much a position will move depending upon a change in interest rates. Remember I said rho, and that's called rho. Uh, It's often a forgotten Greek simply because interest rates don't change that often. And even if they change, you're talking about a cost to carry that's uh, sometimes on, if you're doing 30-day options, the amount of change won't be that great. It can be a little bit 
bigger on longer term options like leaps going out, you know, one or two years. So we have this thing called theta. And basically what happens is, uh, you know, I'll just use a position with about 30 calendar days, not trading days, but calendar days till expiration. And if you think about it, what happens is each day that it passes, all else being equal, remember, sometimes you see the theta decline, sometimes you don't. And if you're short options, theta is a, a positive because you're, it's a decaying asset. Maybe you sold it, you sold ice cubes. You want it to melt away and go to zero. If you're long options, meaning you bought options, theta would work against you because each day that passes, a little bit of the, the time value comes out. But each day that passes, what happens is the theta typically will increase. And a lot of this depends, you know, I want to be careful, uh, all this could change depending upon, let's say, if the underlying went up or down by a couple percentage points or if volatility increased or decreased. You might not even realize the theta changes. But typically on something that doesn't change much, meaning the underlying, the price, where it is right now, you would expect to see theta moving, you know, it would decay at an accelerating rate. And at some point it would stop, sort of, it would crest. Uh, meaning I think on this one, if I kept the, the index exactly where it is today, uh, at some point you would lose $6.17. But then once you sort of crest over, it starts to go down. Now you're losing 6 now you're losing 5 94 and so on and so forth. That final week, there won't be a lot of time value left depending upon where it is. Uh, but at, that time value doesn't tend to decay very much more in that final week uh, for out of the money options. For near the money options, that decay will be, uh, or at the money options, much quicker. But just thinking about something that's more out of the money now. So theta is can be a positive, but Theta can also be a negative depending upon whether or not you are long or short. And so selling options, selling spreads, uh, of the benefits there, right, you're generating premium potential to, uh, to profit from the erosion of that premium as long as the market doesn't move detrimentally against you. Uh, positive time decay, positive theta. Uh, when you sell options, uh, you are sensitive to volatility. So if volatility would compress or go down, that would be a positive if volatility rose, uh, that would work against you because uh, you're sort of short vega, short volatility. So one of the other things that often comes up, though, is when I've written some articles recently, I make the mention that you know over weekends and holidays, sort of the, the time decay benefit works for you. And really, it, I think it's going to be important to make the distinction between what actually is happening over the weekend and the and what happens with regards to you have that many more less days sorry for something to happen and so when you're short an option spread let's say you have calendar days to expiration and then you have actually trading days to expiration and a lot of the software that's out there they have it as calendar days and so you might have heard me before you can figure out the one day implied volatility based probability of an option move. And I take the square root of 252 because that's the number of days that are in a, a trading year. That's the number of days the market's open. But a lot of people use the square root of 365 because that's the number of calendar days. Now, that's that's not necessarily completely accurate because you've got, uh, you know, if you've got days, depending upon the percent of calendar days or weekends and everything that's thrown in, I think it's more accurate, in my opinion, to use the square root of 255, which is the trading days. But I, I bring this up because um, a lot of people have asked me, you know, what what is the benefit of having short options carry over a weekend or holidays? And, and here's the way I look at it. Um, and I'll get to the time decay part of it in a second. But if, if you're short options, uh, you are sort of one of the, the fears or one of the the things that can move against you is if there's some unforeseen news event. And so when the markets aren't open, either on Saturday or Sunday, and maybe on Monday, if you've got you know a three-day weekend or another holiday midweek or something like that, well, that's three days or two or three days where some event could happen that could impact the next opening of the, the exchange of the markets. And so when you have... Uh, when you get past, let's say, you know, two or three days, uh, you get past two or three days where the potential for some underlying event or a fact to move the market uh, against you, you get past those days. And so getting through those uh, is certainly 
you know, a benefit. You know, you're not going to have any earnings releases over the weekend. You're not going to have as much market movements over the weekend. And so your risk then is that from close to open, when you close on Friday and you open on Monday or Tuesday, if there's a holiday, is there some sort of gap up or down, depending upon your position that could actually move against you? So over, and I think I've seen some research on this or somebody showed me something that, uh, uh, the, there's not as much movement as you would think from Friday to, to Monday. Um, but this brings me to the, the idea of weekends and theta decay and, and all this stuff. Uh, and the question came up recently by somebody, you know, do you guys ever sell options on a, a Friday before a holiday weekend? Cause then you get all, all three days, holiday days, right? It seems like that would be a good time to do it. Or like, uh, you know, would, would you sell it the Thursday before Thanksgiving because you've got those three days or maybe you do a, a, a monthly option because you've got Thanksgiving, you've got Christmas, you've got, you know, different type of stuff going on. So here's the way I look at this. Remember I said the all else being equal. There's a lot of stuff going on. And sometimes, you know, volatility is one of the uh, things that, well, price based upon volatility is one of the more sensitive inputs. Okay. So volatility changing, in my opinion, has a, a much larger um, chance of changing the options prices. And so just doing a trade off of one component, well, let's put it this way. Let's say you sell an option spread on the Friday before a holiday weekend. You've got three days with no trading, with no market, you open up on Tuesday. You don't know what the, the price is going to be on Tuesday. You don't know what the volatility is going to be. You probably know what interest rates are going to be. Um, and you do know there's going to be some, some time decay, right? Um, but there's actually some debate whether time decay even happens. And I say the debate because remember I talked about the square root of 252 versus the square root of 365. That's just a fancy way for saying if you're using trading software and it, uh, it uses calendar days. I think a lot of times it sort of assumes that those calendar days are actually trading days. And so if you're doing maybe a, a, a mock-up or you're doing some, some research on there and you fast forward the days and you see the, the value of the, your spread position or your short option changing in a positive way, well, it may or may not be, it's not exactly correct because the markets aren't open. Uh, now, I think it is true that um, at the end of, you know, if you look at Thursday uh, late afternoon, you look at afternoons on Friday, I do think some of the, the theta comes out of positions, but there's other things that are happening. Sometimes uh, we see something that's called spreads widening, which means, you know, your price that you pay for something uh, or what you get for something might not be the same. So there's a lot of factors that go into that. And I think Sometimes the software, um, if, if you have one that actually uses trading days versus calendar days, that might be more instructive. Uh, but just in my opinion, when you, when you look at positions that go from you know a Friday close to a Monday open or a Tuesday open, um, I don't think that you see as much time decay as you think you will. Uh, but that being said, remember, options, uh, selling options spreads is about probabilities. And so selling out of deep out of the money or far out of the money option spreads, meaning that the spreads, the, the short strike is very far away from the current market. Uh, what happens is each day that you get closer to expiration, uh, think about a window closing. Imagine you were sitting in your office and the window is open. You're trying to throw a Nerf football through the window. And if it was open really wide, your probabilities are, are better. But as the window closes and starts getting narrower and narrower, well, you're, you sort of have to get it through a smaller and smaller space. And it's just, if you think about it this way, as you get towards expiration, if a market is this far away, and I'm using my hands and sort of giving you a distance between, if the market is a certain distance away, uh, the probability is based upon uh, what the volatility is telling you in the, in the options market. Uh, the probability of a, a market getting from one point to another or getting a really far distance starts to go down the closer you get to expiration. And so when you think about it in terms of probabilities, uh, that changes the uh, the calculus a little bit. And so that's one of the reasons why uh, certainly less days to expiration, 
less chance for a market to move a greater distance uh, based upon where the current prices are. So weekends and holidays, uh, you get through those days, you get through you know a couple days where something doesn't happen to negatively impact your your position. I certainly think it's uh, it's a good thing. So this brings us back to the idea of selling options or selling option spreads and, and the benefits therein. And one of the benefits, so when you're selling option spreads, you're hoping that you're selling something uh, that has a volatility and volatility actually compresses or you don't really see as much of a move uh, and then price starts to, uh, to come down a little bit. You're selling things, and I go back to the ice cube example, when you're selling options, you're selling something that's a decaying asset. And so the idea is that time is working for you, not against you. But remember, uh, in all else being equal, it's the only input. But there's a lot of different inputs that go into an options price. One of the big ones is volatility. But certainly, if something starts to move against you, the price can move detrimentally against you. Uh, it can do so in a, in a quick fashion. And the idea is when you're selling options, uh, you have that positive time decay each and every day that passes closer to expiration. The probability of where a market is and where it can go to hurt you goes down. It doesn't mean it's an absolute certainty it won't get there. Uh, but that's the idea with a high probability option strategy. You're playing the probabilities and you're looking for something that has a small chance of, of moving uh, or hurting you and a high chance. Uh, but remember, uh, when markets move and they move quick enough and far enough, it, it's certainly a risk. So anyway, I thought I'd do a, a quick episode on time decay. And it seems like every, well, I don't know, every couple of years, I get a question about uh, just how it works, how, you know, how close or how quickly does it actually come out of the, the price of a spread. And then this whole idea of the weekends and holidays. And so, and by the way, I mean, people have thought about this before. So if uh, when I used to do the seminar circuit, uh, kind of going around talking to, to traders and investors and trying to help people uh, manage risk and teaching people about options, uh, quite often you'd have someone in the audience raise their hand and say, hey, uh, why wouldn't you just sell spreads right before a long holiday weekend and then Monday or I'm sorry, Tuesday, when all that time decay came out of them? then wouldn't you just make a bunch of money? And the answer is, well, it's complicated, right? Uh, so there's a lot of inputs there. And the trading software that people use, sometimes I think it uh, overestimates the amount of time decay that comes out over the weekend. But that said, weekends and holidays where a market movement can't hurt you, uh, the things that can hurt you is sort of external news and world events and different things like that. Uh, you do have a couple days for something to happen before the market opens, but you get through the holidays or you get through the weekend and that risk starts to come out. So hopefully this uh, quick episode helped you out with a couple of things. Uh, but remember, theta is a measure of how much uh, a position will be reduced due to time decay for every one day that passes in time. And I can't say enough. The important thing to remember is that there are volatility inputs. There are distance away from the current market to your strike price. There's interest rates, number of things that come out. And also just, and this gets into a little more of the, uh, the details of, of how strategies are traded, but also how options are quoted and how prices work and how sometimes spreads widen or narrow based upon what's going on in the market. And so there's a lot of things that go into it. Uh, but I like the questions and I like the fact that uh, people are thinking about time decay. Uh, it is certainly a positive for options sellers. So with that, we'll leave it there. We'll keep this one uh, quick. Uh, by the way, also, uh, I always, rather than ask you to rate and review and give us five stars, of course, you can do that if you want to. Uh, we, we love that. But uh, please share this with somebody who you think might benefit or be interested in the content. And also, if you have an idea of what you'd like to see on future episodes, either ones I do by myself or ones we have a guest on, uh, go ahead and, and uh, reach out to me. Uh, my website's razorwealth.com, and uh, you can hit up the uh, contact 
us button and uh, and send me a note. All right, until next week, have a uh, good week, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>